In today's statistics video, we're going to be taking a look at the one sample Z test. What we're going to do is go over some background information behind this test. Uh, when you want to use it compared to the T test, and then we'll go through a manual example. After that, we'll jump through some Python code. So that way you can perform these tests more efficiently. So with that out of the way, let's go over some background information behind this test. All right. So let's take a little more information on the one sample Z test. So what you do for the one sample Z test is you compare the sample mean to the known value, which is typically your population mean. Uh, you're going to use the Z test typically when your samples are more than 30 and the population standard deviation has to be known. And just a few examples, right? You can do IQ scores of a sample of data science students is significantly different than the population IQ and the group of runners is faster than the average marathon time, right? So your next concept you want to know is null hypothesis versus alternative hypothesis. Example, testing the durability of a new running shoe. A shoe manufacturer claims that its new running shoe model can last an average of 400 miles before needing replacement. To verify this claim, the company tests a sample of shoes and records the number of miles each shoe lasts before showing significant wear. One sample Z test is conducted to determine if the average durability of the sample differs significantly from the claim 400 miles. The population standard deviation is known to be 15 miles. So no hypothesis, the mean number of miles running the shoes last is equal to 400 miles. Alternative would be the mean number of miles the shoe last is different than 400 miles. Uh, failing to reject null hypothesis means the sample is not significantly different from the population mean. Now let's talk about p-value, alpha, and z-statistic. Uh, p-value is the probability that tells us whether the difference is significant due to chance. Uh, significance level alpha typically set at 0.05 or 0.01, which means we're okay with a 5% or 1% chance of being wrong. And just to show you some calculations, confidence level equals a 1 minus alpha. Uh, so that's why you'll see some 95 or 99% confidence level. Our z-statistic, a value that tells us how far our sample mean is from the population mean in units of standard error. And if our p-value is less than alpha, we reject HO for HA. Also to know uh, one tail versus two tail, a two tailed test is used when you're testing the possibility of a difference in either direction, both above and below a certain value. And you can think of like the running shoe mean is 400, the shoe mean is not equal to 400, right? And the alpha is split between both tails of the distribution for 95% confidence level. Each tail is 2.5% of the rejection region. A one tail test is used when you're other interested in determining whether a sample is greater than or less than, but not both, right? And you can think of like the shoe mean is 400, the shoe mean is greater than 400, or the shoe mean is 400, the shoe mean is less than 400, and the entire 5% uh, is going to be in one tail. Okay, and here's the steps you want to take for the one sample Z test. So determine the null and alternative hypothesis and confidence level, find the sample mean, calculate the Z statistic, find the p-value, compare the p-value to significance level, and then you want to make a conclusion. So a sample 30 running shoes is tested for durability and the following miles uh, before wear are recorded. So we have all these over here. We want to test the company's claim that the average durability is 400 miles at the 95% confidence level. Uh, the population standard deviation is known to be 15 miles. So uh, first define our hypothesis. We already covered that, right, a little bit earlier. Then we're going to calculate the sample mean. So we add all these up. We divide by 30. That's, there's 30 samples. We get 396.3. .3. And we calculate the Z statistic, right? So what we take is the 396.3. We subtract that 400-mile claim. And then we divide that by 15 divided by 30 samples. And you take the square root of that. Uh, you get the value of negative 1.35. And then you want to find the p-value. P-value is about 0 0.18. It's a two-tailed test. Then you want to compare the p-value to the significance level. Well, the p-value is way greater uh, than the alpha value, right? And we talked about the 95% confidence level, right? So the alpha value would be 0 0.05. And we draw a conclusion. So at the 5% significance level, there is no significant difference between the sample mean of 396.3 and the claimed average durability of 400 miles. Thus, the company's claims seem to be reasonable based on this sample. So that's your background out of the way. Uh, we'll be going through the same example over here in Python code. And we'll be going over another example, uh, showing you guys some shortcuts. So uh, grab your notebook ready and let's start coding. All right, so to get started, what we're gonna do is say from stats models dot stats dot weight stats import z test and then we're going to import 
numpy as an e, and then lastly from scipy.stats import norm and uh just a little space there that should be everything oh i'm getting a little bit of error here oh i misspelled wait that's always a great way to start the video and uh that's the only things that we need to import um also recommend that you set your alpha over here so let's just say alpha equals 0 0.05 uh, which is pretty common and we're off to the races so uh, we'll start off with a little bit more manual example what we went over on those slides we'll just cover here so what we'll do first is say example one more manual uh the second example is going to be much easier so what i'm going to do is pass in our data and uh shoe distance and we have all these over here and uh now feel free to use your numbers that you want randomly generate them um or copy what i have here i'm just going to slowly scroll across because there's 30 entries i will have this into a video or not video but a blog article soon so uh, in the process of getting some of the different videos on the channel transcribed and if you do want to help with that hit us up on discord so uh, shoe distance is there and what i'm going to set up now is the population mean and standard deviation so population mean that's going to be equal to 400 and then what we're going to do next is have our population simulation. So population std, it's going to be equal to 15, right? Then what we'll do next is we'll set up our sample mean. So we'll say sample mean like that. And then that's all to equal to np.mean, so np.mean, and then pass and true distance. So distance like that. Man, I cannot spell today. True distance. There we go. And just to show you what this looks like, right? It should match what, what I had in the slides. If not, that's a little bit embarrassing, uh, but you can see 396.3, awesome. Now we need to do our sample size. So sample size is just gonna be 30. Um, but what we're gonna do is just find the length. We'll say length to shoe distance like that, right? Nothing really too spectacular, nothing crazy. Uh, we'll just print this out just to make sure it's 30, but uh, that's what it should be. And you can see 30 is over here. Awesome. Uh, now what we can do is calculate our z-score. So we'll say a z-score equals, and we'll have sample mean minus population mean, right? And then we're gonna divide that by population standard deviation. It's gonna be divided by np.square roots. And then just pass in a sample size like that. It's gonna be our z-score. It's gonna be about negative 1.34. So print out our z-score like that. Just depends how you round it. Well, this isn't gonna be rounded, but uh, you can see right over there. Awesome. And then let's find our p-value. So uh, we're doing a little bit more manual of a p-value. Again, we'll show you a little bit later. Uh, it's way faster. But we're gonna say this is equal to two times one minus norm dot CDF, absolute z-score, this is a two-tailed test, and let's print out our p-value like that. And you see we get 0 0.18. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy over an if-else statement. So if p-value less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis, and then else fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? And you're gonna see fail to reject the null hypothesis, or, or values 0 0.18, right? Which is much greater than 0 0.05. Uh, so we fail to reject. If it was a lot lower, right, we would reject our null hypothesis and go with the alternative hypothesis. But we covered that a little bit in our example. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at example two, which uh, we're going to use stats models. And what we're going to take a look at is doing the z-test on a data set of marathon completion times. I determine if the sample mean is significantly different from our population mean. And we're going to look at 50 different individual marathon times and that's gonna be representation of the sample drawn from the population. Uh, our null hypothesis is gonna say the sample mean is equal to the population mean, and the alternative hypothesis is gonna say it's different. Uh, not specifying the tail direction, I'm just looking for it to be different in general. So here's our marathon data, right? I'm gonna populate this over here. And uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a look at our population mean. We'll say population mean 
equals 270. And I should probably specify, like, this is more of the average runner, right? Uh, the average runner is going to be by four-ish hours. Uh, we're not taking a look at elites or someone like in Boston qualifying for shape. So, all right. So we have our population mean, which is over here of 270. Let's take a look at our population standard deviation. So population STD, we'll say that's going to be equal to 30, right? And then what we're going to do next is we're going to run our test. And we can run our test in literally one line of code. So we'll say z-score. Then we'll have our p-value. So p-value that. And we're going to say this is equal to our z-test. So z-test, we'll have our marathon data. So marathon data. Then value equals population mean. Population mean. And then we take alternative. We're going to look at a two-sided test. So make sure it's two-sided. Right? Again, not looking at anything in particular, greater than or less than. Uh, so that's why we use two-sided. And we can print our values. So first, what we can do is print out our z-score, right? And we get our z-score value, which is negative 10.34. And lastly, we can get our p-value. So pass in our p-value over here. And our p-value is essentially zero. Um, so kind of opposite of the first example I showed you guys. Uh, let's pass in our if-else statement over here. All right, I changed this up a little bit. Uh, so if p-value less than alpha reject the null hypothesis that sample mean is significantly different from the population mean, else fail to reject the null hypothesis, no significant difference. Well, obviously when we get a z-score of negative 10, a p-value close to zero, um, we're way off, right? So we're rejecting the, the null hypothesis. The sample mean is significantly different from the population mean. And I'm actually kind of curious what mean um, we actually had over here. So np.mean. And let's pass in our marathon data. I'm actually really curious. This was, uh, you can see it's 256.8. Uh, so not a horrible marathon time, right? Four hours and uh, essentially 16 minutes. But uh, regardless, yeah, that was essentially our one sample Z test. What I recommend is really you just use a Z test from stats models uh, rather than using scipy.stats. In this statistics series, I use sci high stats a ton, but really the Z test makes it super easy with stats and all. So I recommend that, but I show you guys both ways, right? There's the more manual way if you want to use SciPy, or if you want to do it a lot faster, right? Use the one that's going to be in stats models. Just determine, you know, your test. Uh, in this example it was two-sided, right? Otherwise you can take a look at one specific tail. And yeah, that's about it. So after this, I hope you're able to perform the one sample Z test. And if you guys learned something new in this video or cleared up any confusion, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're uploading anywhere from a two to four different data science focused videos every single week. If you want to continue our statistics playlist, I'm going to link a few videos down below in the description. I also have a playlist right here that you guys can check out.